Hey everyone, community Jeff here again, and yeah, let's do another one of these, the first, the one you never forget. I know I just did one, but I'm on a roll here, so uh, fun stuff. This is again a uh, a little series that I borrowed from Zep Pearl's channel. He has been doing it for a while, and what the idea is, if you didn't see the previous ones I've done, is a band that you love, and basically the first album that got you into that band, and how it tends to be the one usually nostalgically that you never forget it tends to be one of the band one of the albums that is your favorite so i know it holds true for me with a lot of releases uh where the band that i cut my teeth on in the beginning tends to be the most popular in my mind so anyway we're talking about jewish priest today let's get into this i do not have everything i'm only looking at vinyl i have everything they have on cd but i wasn't digging those out so we're just looking at the vinyl collection at this point and um anyway pick this up this is the record store day release it came out a couple years ago i got it on sale they cut it down to like half price um it's still in the shrink but it is open it's the one that's on the coke bottle color that came out a handful of years ago so Anyway, yes, um, not where I cut my teeth on it. So let's keep moving. Another Record Store Day release that came out. This is the one with nice embossed stuff and everything. So I've been picking up a lot. Most all of the albums I have by them are probably reissues of one shape or another. Um, I do not have, and again, not where I cut my teeth on. Uh, Send it for sin. This is again, one of the more modern remasters that I picked up there. Uh, and then we got, uh, you know, Killing Machine, which helped bent for leather in the U.S., but when it was reissued under the original cover there. Again, at this point, I don't think I knew anything about them, so I know I'm missing uh, staying class, but uh, British Steel. And I'm pretty sure I might maybe vaguely have known about some of the hits at this point, but honestly, still... Not really on my radar. If you remember my story, I didn't get into hard rock until around 78 with Kiss. And really only Kiss until probably about 81 when I moved and started a, a friend of mine at in the neighborhood, you know, introduced me some other stuff he was listening to. So that, I would almost say my horizons broadened around 81. So again, all of these early things I was not aware of. Unleashed in the East, this is an original pressing, but... Again, not real familiar with it. So anyway, this is where it came in for me, point of entry. This would have been my entry point. MTV was starting. We were seeing some of the songs on there. Uh, and this is probably the first album that I really started listening to. And you know, then we later went back and listened to the older stuff. But for me, this is my entry point. <laughs> the point of, this is my point of entry. For Judas Priest, followed quickly by Screaming for Vengeance. So, um, I think this album probably got played to death when we were kids. Uh, absolutely, and of course, MTV again just came out, was big, playing the songs. Um, just this band was just perfect at that time, and these two albums are the highlight for me. And I would say, even though that is where I cut my teeth and probably got it. This one, I think, has kind of overshadowed it. Again, maybe I discovered them around the same time as these. Maybe that's what it is, because it seems like these two albums got a lot of play back in the day. So, uh, yeah, Scream for Vengeance is probably the one that I recognize as the high mark from what I got, for what I was into. Defenders of the Faith, I remember now, I do remember when this one came out and went out and buying it. So this is where I bought something when it first came out. Um, fell in love with this album. I remember listening to this. I used to have my paper out. I remember listening to this in my headphones when I delivered my papers and stuff. And uh, just absolutely great album. The whole, you know, stage show and everything they were doing back then was absolutely great. Um, this is an OG pressing a Priest Live, I guess. Uh, picked this up at some point. Live album. Uh, Ram it down. One of the remasters, reissues there that I picked up. I do have um, Painkiller. I ordered it really cheap, one of those Amazon price drops, uh, but it's coming from somewhere else. It's supposed to be here like in October. But anyway, so I don't have that, but ram it down. 
And then I, you know, so there's a little bit of a gap in there, and most of those vinyl releases I have on my wish list, and a lot of them are in the low 20s, but I just haven't jumped on any of them yet. Angel of Retribution is one that I picked up not too terribly long ago that I showed. I uh, was thrilled to find a copy of this for a decent price, so I got that one. And then we jump forward to Firepower. I picked this up. This is probably when I first got back into vinyl records. 2017 I think this was one of the first Judas Priest ones that I at least one of the new ones that I got that I picked up so I am missing a few in there of course um, I've ran across a copy of Nostradamus I think I mentioned this before in the video about two years ago they had a copy in the second and Charles and it was in the glass case and they wanted 150 bucks for it which would not have been a bad price so I, but I asked them, I asked them at the time, I said, let me, can I see it? I said, the vinyl records are in there. She said, yes, but the book and everything's not. So really it was just the records and the box. I said, the problem's going to be, did they, were they aware of the issue with the vinyl records and did they preserve them in such a way as to take them out? Because if you left them in the sleeves, the chemicals in the sleeves ruin the record. She did not know that. The person who sold it to them obviously did know it, and when I opened it, the records were ruined. They were ruined. There's, I don't think there's any way to clean them. So uh, I pointed it out to them. I said, these records are ruined. You have basically got yourself a paperweight here. They were all just waxy colored. It looked like you couldn't get them off. Anyway, it disappeared. I'm hoping nobody bought it, but the person who obviously had it must have kept all the goodies inside and just got rid of the box and the records and probably sold it for a hefty price and the place got ripped. And then Invincible Shield, the newest album, of course. I have that. So, yes, uh, I have one more coming by them. And then again, I have a handful of the older stuff on my wish list that eventually I will pick up. But there you go. So for me... Screaming for Vengeance is the one I'll never forget. It really is the high water mark with Point of Entry being right in there before. And that's my thoughts and look at where I got involved with the Judas Priest. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Rock on and rock hard.